Greetings radio people, welcome back to the shack and apologies it's such a mess. I wanted to do a video today all about ADS-B data. Now a pilot friend once explained to me that aircraft to try and stop them bumping into each other they all squawk a bit like ducks and geese. Now the squawk is obviously an electronic squawk and that is broadcast on a thousand and ninety megahertz and is called ADS-B data. Now if you go to a website like FlightAware that's the data that FlightAware uses to track where aircraft are. It's in the public domain, it's out there, you can receive it, you can decode it, you can do what you want with it. And for some time I've been running an ADS-B receiver on a simple little Raspberry Pi which I'm sure you've all heard of. The software is called Pi Aware. it's made by FlightAware and it allows me to draw some pictures here of a map and some aircraft that the um, the ADS-B receiver can hear here. It also allows me to send that data to FlightAware. There's many many people across the country and across the world supplying data from their receivers to FlightAware. They also have their own receivers all over the place but a lot of people do what I'm doing. The aerial that I've been using to receive ADS-B data is particularly pants. It's uh, two bits of uh, mains cable stuck together on a connector which is wedged in the corner of the window of the room that I'm in right now. So it only really receives from the west because uh, it's looking towards the west. The house is in the way to the east. So I wanted to try and make something and I thought I'd share with you the process that I'm just going to go through very quickly to create myself an ADS-B antenna, create a masthead amplifier to try and help boost the signal before it gets lost down the coax and then rig it up and see what sort of difference we can make. I'll just quickly, this is a quick screenshot of the kind of thing I typically receive on ADS-B data and hopefully when we've done the work and we've made the new antenna and we've stuck it up in the air we'll be able to see a bit of an improvement. So what I'm going to try and do now is just show you how I um, match aerials and how I'll go about creating a resonant ADS-B antenna. Um, the ADS-B data is transmitted at 1090 megahertz which is just above one gigahertz. Um, anything above a gigahertz is considered to be microwave. So we're at just over one gigahertz impedance, uh, in frequency, sorry. Now what, what you're looking at now is my Regal uh, DSA815 spectrum analyzer. It also includes something called a tracking generator and this box of tricks that you can see bolted on the front here is a return loss bridge. Now I don't want to go into the real detail of the maths and all of that kind of stuff but what this allows me to do is see where the resonant frequency is of anything that I connect to this port here and by resonant frequency I mean where is it a good match at 50 ohms. So this bridge came with a bunch of software which is inside this uh, inside the spectrum analyzer. So I press the measurement button and you can see VSWR is available as a, so I switch that on. And then we press measurement setup. The first thing you have to do is calibrate it as open. So currently the um, the bridge is looking at the worst possible imp uh, worst possible match, i.e. nothing connected at all. So we calibrate it at open, then hit the VSWR button, then just alter the reference level so that we can see the uh, see the traces. So let's say we move the reference level down to 40 dB, for example. So what I've got here, this is a just a really stupid piece of uh, soldered together rubbish that I found. This is a is an SMA socket, which you can see is the sort of brassy coppery colored thing here. I've taken a piece of mains cable. These uh, parts here, the four pieces you can see soldered to the outside of this plate here, are roughly seven centimeters from the edge of this connector to the end of the wire. I've cut them to seven centimeters. And theory says that the resonant frequency, uh, the resonant length at 1090 megahertz is 67 millimeters. So each of these is cut to seven centimeters and then what I did is I attached this onto the return loss bridge without dropping it. So I just attached this onto the return loss bridge and then put the uh, marker at 1090 megahertz uh, which is there. And you can see yeah, this is quite close to that already. But I started off with quite a, a reasonable length of uh, cable on here, you know, another centimetre or so. And I just kept snipping and snipping and snipping until the resonant point got to roughly where I wanted it to be. So now I've finished fiddling with it. You can see that the, the marker here is actually at 1090 megahertz. And the software calculates the SWR of the antenna for me, which is about 1.2 to 1. So that's a really very good match at this frequency. Return loss is just, just about 20 
PB. And then there's a mathematical formula you can apply from the return loss calculation to calculate the VSWR. But all, all we need to do in this map is make sure we're roughly in the right ballpark. It's only a receive antenna, but the best way to ensure that the antenna receives the maximum signals you've got at the frequency you're after is to make sure it's resonant. Now, if you look at the, hopefully you can see that the the tape measure I'm not sure you can but that is very much at 67 centimeters from the very base of this on this connector here so the very base of the cable right to the end where I've cut it is 67 millimeters uh, which is exactly what it should be actually so these aren't all that critical they need to be very you know pretty much within the right ballpark but as I said minus seven centimeters and then I've just tuned this to get it right so that will make a perfectly good antenna for ADSB. now to work well it needs to be up clear line of sight with all of the aircraft that we're going to receive so that needs to be above the chimney on the top of my house and we'll move on to that in a little bit but for now we've got an antenna to work with so what we're going to do now what i've got here is one of these um from an auction site near you i've bought this uh wideband amplifier now this claims to amplify from 50 megahertz to 6 gigahertz it says, I'm assuming this is gain, is 20 dB, uh, draws 60 milliamps of current, and it runs on a 5 volt DC supply, which I've got coupled up through this cable at the top here. So one of the things you need to think about when you're, when you're worrying about frequencies, certainly microwave frequencies, and we've already said that our antenna is going to be working at 1,090 megahertz, is if I were to stick that antenna on the top of the house and then run a length of coax down to the room that I'm in the losses would be really quite astonishing um, by the time the cable got to the room I'm in there would be little or no signal left whatsoever so what a lot of people do and, and what you really need to do is put some amplification very close to the antenna as close to the antenna as possible to compensate or to overcompensate for the losses in the cable so that everything that gets received by the antenna is amplified then sent down the coax cable and by the time you've subtracted the losses in the coax you need to have at least as much gain in the amplifier as you've got loss in the cable so what I'm proposing to do is to mount this up in the sky with the antenna so that we put an amplifier very close to the aerial itself before we send the feeder down so what I've done on the spectrum analyzer now this includes what's called a tracking generator so this is the tracking generator output I've looped it straight back to the input but I've also put a 20 dB attenuator on here so what I'm going to do is put the uh, tracking generator on so you'll see now roughly at minus 40 dB ish we've got uh, this line coming across the spectrum analyzer now so this is my tracking generator signal so what I want to do is um, freeze this trace so that we can keep reference to it so if I say trace number one and I say select um, freeze so I can now freeze that trace if I now switch on um, trace number two we've also got a purple trace running on top of that so what I'm going to do is open up this connector that I've got in the middle of here and insert my amplifier so that we can have a look at what the gain actually is because uh, I don't believe what it says on the label really so let's have a look at what this actually delivers to us now it's not bad is it so the difference between this yellow line which is the cable looped back and now the cable with the, the purple line with the amplifier in so the difference between these two is the gain now each one of these marks on the horizontal mark on the screen is 10 dB so it's in or in the order of 10 dB so if we were to put a marker on and put it at a thousand and ninety megahertz which is where we're interested in so the amplified trace is at minus 21 dB if we were to look at the uh, at the original trace which is just with the loop back that's at minus 37 so if we subtract the two that's the actual gain that we've got now 37 from 21 now even my maths is good enough to do that so that's the gain that the amplifier's got and as long as that's more than the gain or the loss rather of the cable that we're going to run we should be good so this looks like a perfectly acceptable bit of kit to put at the top of the mast to amplify the signal from the aerial before we feed it down to the shack if you didn't do this i can assure you the aerial whilst the aerial would work perfectly the signals that you'd get by the time you've got to the end of the coax would have almost disappeared and it really wouldn't wouldn't improve anything at all so what i've done now in my fairly typical heath robinson type style i found a waterproof box kicking around in in one of the junk boxes i've got here this piece of 
jiggery pokery here is called a bias T. Now all a bias T is is an inductor and a capacitor. You could probably make one very easily. I happen to have quite a few of these. Now what this does, it allows you to send DC up the coax. So the power that we've got coming to this thing, this is two things here. We've got RF energy coming in here and we've also got DC coming in here. This is a 5 volt DC supply. So all this allows me to do is to send the 5 volts up the coax. So I don't need a separate power cable. And in here it splits off the DC coming out of here and the RF coming out of here. So there's a cable from here to the output of my amplifier and the, fire and the, the DC connections here go to the power connection of the amplifier. I've wedged it in, stuck a bit of silicon on the top with a SMA socket on it. So hopefully our, our antenna which we've made will fit on the top of here. I can waterproof the box, I can stick it up in the air and we can see how it works if the signals I'm receiving are any better. So I'll go and climb a ladder, stick this on top of one of the poles I've got in the garden and come and report back. So I've got the uh, antenna up in the air, I've got a bias T in the shack here so I'm feeding <coughs> excuse me, 5 volts up the coax um, and splitting it at this end and at the other end and hopefully you can see, I don't know what I've done now, uh, hopefully you can see that um, the software is, um, or rather the, the receiver is picking up aircraft from pretty much uh, quite a wide spread area and from around where I am so I'm quite pleased with that. I um, was only picking stuff up to the west really before uh, so I seem to have a much better coverage than I did. So I'll leave it running. I mean it runs 24-7 anyway. I'll keep an eye on it. But this does seem to have improved things quite drastically. I hope you found that of some interest. Uh, comments below if you want. And uh, I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks very much. Bye.